If you're brand new to Ableton and you just opened it for the first time or you're more of an intermediate producer and you're looking to learn Deep House, this video is for you. I'm gonna go through every single step of making a Deep House track and if you follow along with me, by the end of this video, you're gonna have your very own original Deep House track that you can play out and send to your friends and it should be of good quality. I'm gonna give you guys all those little secrets that nobody will tell you that's gonna make or break your track. If you've tried to make a Deep House track on your own and it sounded nothing like your reference, I'm gonna tell you why that is. The first step to doing this is we're gonna start building our groove. So we're gonna put together a drum loop and we're gonna look at what elements makes a good drum loop and makes it effective. Next, we're gonna work on our bass. We're gonna develop a good strong bass line that drives the track and then we're gonna work on the relationship between the kick and the bass. This relationship is one of the most important parts of your track. Then we're gonna introduce some vocals and we're gonna do some vocal processing, make these vocals sound expensive. Then we're gonna bring it all together with some synths and some arrangement that's gonna make it a killer track. The next thing we're gonna do is touch on some final mix and mastering tools that's gonna make your track sound good, either if it's in your car or on a stage at a club. Make sure you stay till the end because I'm gonna give you some free samples and some free max for live plugins. So we are here in Ableton 12. We're gonna make a Deep House track. <clears throat> so I have these samples I'm gonna link in the description. They're all free. So it's some basic drum samples to get us started. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that folder over here, which is going to be in my samples, Deep House drums. So <clears throat> I'll link these, they're totally free. It's a pretty good intro set for Deep House drums. They're all pretty good, honestly. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our groove. So the foundation of Deep House and really music in general is like a strong groove. So we wanna have a drum loop and like a groove to kind of build off, like a feeling. So we're gonna start with the drums. First thing we're gonna start with is a kick. So we're gonna kind of cruise through these and, and find a good kick. So the characteristics of a, of a Deep House kick are punchy, so we want something a little bit transient and heavy. We want it low, and then these are typically layered with like a higher percussive element. So you have the low kick and then the percussive element as well. So that's something to kind of take note of if you're using different samples, or if you're just looking for one in general. Punchy, low, now you probably hear the layers on these kicks of like the kick and then like a perk or, or a hat or something like that. go with like this one's dope so this one uh a lot of these have a little bit of uh coloration on them like rc20 which is kind of like a fuzz and like old kind of feel processing on it so this one's dope we'll go with this one it's a nine a process 909 drum so typically with uh deep house we're living at around 120 bpm it can go down it can go 105 130 but 120 is like a really good starting place so our foundation is gonna be our four on the floor kick. So that's gonna mean every quarter bar. So uh, <clears throat> I'll fly around a little bit with like quick keys, but you know, I'll kind of explain what I'm doing. So command one or command two will increase or decrease the grid value. What I mean by that is if I press command one a lot, now our grid is super small. If I press command two, now it's gonna lock on to like every half bar. So we're gonna command one till we have a quarter beat like this. Command L to loop. So now we have our <clears throat> we have our four bars we're gonna work with and kind of start building our foundation off. When we're choosing our drum samples in general, it's usually good to pick samples from the same sample pack or the same kit. So we're gonna try to find something that matches this in like a transient sense. So we want to have something that matches it, like the feeling and the transient and the punch and all that. So we're going to go with like. That's a pretty good one. Let's see how that sounds. That one's a little bit too sharp. We're going to go with like, here's a classic one. Now we're done. Now I'm just playing. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a hat. So 
the way we're going to think about all of our elements that are not our kick and our clap. So these are like our fundamental drums, kick and clap or kick and snare, depending on the genre or what song you're making. These are going to dictate our grid. And what I mean by that is we're going to do a lot of stuff that's like a little bit off grid and a little bit imperfect. That's the humanization that makes a track like swingy and groove and, and feel good. Uh, and so in order to do that, we need to dictate where the grid is at. So that's why with these samples in particular, with our kick and our clap, we're going to leave them right on grid. And I'll kind of uh, show you why that is once we start adding some percussive elements. Here's a, a good traditional analog hat. So we're gonna put in a lot of like little accent drums and percussive elements. What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna do something like this because this is so repetitive and so redundant that the the listeners the listeners are going to hear this and they're going to get tired of it super quick so what we're asking ourselves at this point in the drum loop is how can we keep this interesting and grooving and swinging so people are constantly like hearing new little things so right now we're going to build off this four bar loop and you know we'll kind that'll kind of evolve as we get into the song a little bit more but for now we're going to do little stuff like this we're going to uh decrease our grid value a little bit One cool thing about rides is we can use these as like sweeps. So if we press R, it'll reverse these samples. And now we can like really bring this back around to the loop. So like. So notice what we're not doing is we're not doing like aside from our, our hat that's on every quarter note. We're spreading stuff out so that we have a lot of like different samples. Um, so it's not, again, it's not the same thing happening over and over again. So we have lots of spacing here. We have lots of uh, uh, room to breathe and, and distance between these samples. Going back to using the samples from the same kit. So our kick is a 909, a process 909 kick. So now that we see a snare 909, like, yes, we're gonna use it because it's part of the same kit. So right now this drum loop sounds like shit. And the reason for that is because we haven't done any volume leveling or processing. So when I work with newer students, one of the most common things I see that, uh, people who are new to production do that I myself have done. So no shame at all is leave everything at zero. So what I mean by that is over here, if we're looking at the levels, these are all fully loud. And the way our soundstage works is we want to create depth. We want to have some elements right in the front, some elements, elements in the back, some elements on the side. So the easiest way to, to think about this is like, let's say we're at a, we're at a Broadway play, right? And so we have the main star. Like I just went to see, um, uh, Michael Jackson, the Michael Jackson one a couple months ago. And so we have the guy who's playing uh, um, uh, Nigel something, the guy who's playing Michael Jackson. He's right in the middle. So he's dead center in the front, closest to the audience, and he's doing his dance. And then over, you know, on the sides, we have these other people who are also, you know, doing things. And then further back, we have less important people doing other things. 
And so think about this comparison when you're building your soundstage and think about, we can't have everybody up in front in the middle of the stage. We like, there's only room for Michael there. Everybody else is, is less important and they're further back. And that's the way we're going to think about this. So we're going to think about what's who, what's our Michael Jackson here? What's our important elements? As far as our drums goes, it's our, cl- our kick and our clap or our, our snare. So we're going to keep those at zero, and then we're going to move everything else back. We're going to move it to the sides and out of the way. The way we're going to do this is A, with volume. That's the biggest one, is we're going to turn down the volumes of these other samples. B, with um, stereo imaging, so we're going to pan them a little bit. C, with, with uh, filters, so... If you think about if something's close to you, like think about if someone's like yelling at the other room, what do you hear? You hear, no, 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 no. You hear, you hear the lows, you don't hear the high end. So dampening the high end of, of certain samples will make them seem, will push them further away. And then of course, reverb. So if you think about like, if we're in a parking garage and I'm, I'm yelling at you from across the parking garage, you're going to hear a lot of reverb. You're going to hear a lot of the room. So that's also something that tells our brains that something is far away. So we're going to kind of implement those different techniques to to create depth and a sound stage with our drums. What I like to do is grouping my kick and my clap. So we're going to group these, and uh, I call this KNS. You can uh, name it whatever. By the way, that's Shift Arrow to select to Command G to group them. KNS kick and snare. Now another rule of stereo imaging that's very important to remember is you you always want your lowest frequencies, not always because there's exceptions, they're literally every rule, but you typically want your lowest frequencies in the middle because that's where they're most impactful. So like when you hear a kick or a sub bass, most of the time it's in the middle of the stereo field. That's because the further you spread something out, it kind of loses power. So we typically reserve that space for the low the low elements. So our kick, and we we can do a little panning on, on our, our clap, but remember, because the kick is low and the clap is high, they're not necessarily going to clash if they're right in the middle. So when we're start we're starting to do like little mix decisions here, like on our drum loop. One thing to remember is your lows is your roof, and what I mean by that is if we look down here, we see our kick is like all the way way up here, and that's how it should be. Our lows should be the highest the loudest or the the loudest looking on an eq8 a lot of people including myself make the mistake of we get to a certain point where there's no more ceiling to push the kick to so what i like to do that really helps me in my production is i reference everything to the kick so like let's say our kick isn't banging in relation to the clap we turn the clap down I would say in this in this uh, situation, it's it's not. I would say the kick's probably sitting good, but we can always nudge the clap down two decibel. Perfect. So we have this group. They're pretty good in relation to each other. We're gonna come back and do some processing later, um, but now we're gonna get to all of our top end elements. And what I mean by top end are the higher pitched elements. So everything that's kind of more towards the top. So we're gonna group these, and I name I like to name this like tops. So one of the greatest benefits of working in groups is once you get everything good in relation to everything else in that group, you can treat it and mix it like one element. Now that we're going to go through and like process our, our top end elements and make them all good in relation to each other, we don't have to necessarily reference all of our other elements with all of our tops. We just reference it with the group in general. So the first thing we want to do is make these all generally the same volume level. So we want a little further back. So like we want the, the hat loud and the shaker loud. And these are kind of like little background accent elements. So we're going to turn these down. We'll move this uh, snare up to the kick and snare group. So one of your greatest friends in this kind of stuff is going to be a glue compressor. Basically, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with compression, what it is, is it decreases the dynamic range of something. So what that means is if we take a look at like a glue compressor here. It 
if we introduce compression, what it's going to do, it's going to make everything closer in dynamic range. So it's going to make everything um, more like in volume. So once everything's close enough, we can introduce some glue compression. And now look how consistent this is. All of the, the transients are like this, where we have loud and high versus compressed. And this, by the way, if anyone's new to production, um, this, I'm going to link this in the description. It's like three bucks. Fire for learning compression. This literally changed my whole perspective of compression because it gives you a chance to see what you're doing to the waveform. So for so long, I'm sitting over here like trying to hear these differences and there's very subtle differences. But once you introduce this, you can actually see what it's doing. So you can see the, the shaping going on. And this really, really helps you learn compression. So I'll link this. I can't recommend it enough. Super fire little add on here. So another aspect of our top end is we don't need any lows. We're going to have some, we're going to have our sub bass. We're going to have our mids. So we, with that being said, we can chop out a lot of the lows on here. So we're going to bring in an EQ eight and we're going to nudge this pretty high and we're going to play it until we start to hear like loss of character of, of some of the elements here. A little top damping like we talked about pushes it back just a little bit. And then of course, uh, like we had also mentioned, the reverb is also going to push it back. So with reverb, less is more. You really don't need to use that much. Uh, some of my favorite reverbs are the Convolution Reverb Pros that are max for live. They're free. So we're going to come in pretty light with this reverb. So let's put it to start at like 10%. And then the last thing we had mentioned is some stereo imaging. So we're going to widen this a little bit. So we're just going to grab a utility. And by the way, when I'm uh, searching for stuff, it's just command F. So anywhere we are in our session, if we press command F, it's going to take us over here to our browser menu and it's automatically going to enter into the search bar. So we can press command F utility type in the first couple letters. And now we can literally just arrow down to it and click it. So it's that little kind of time saving stuff. That's really going to make or break your production you're going to get to where you're going way faster if you know how to kind of implement this stuff. So um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to right click the utility. This is kind of a secret thing not a lot of people know about. And instead of width, we're going to move to mid side mode. And the difference is when we're widening, we're widening the signal, but it still has the middle. So it's like we're just widening the whole signal. With uh, mid side, what we're doing is we're actually just pushing it to the side. So it no longer has the middle. It's just on the sides. So we can do that or another free Max for Live device that we really like is Haas Effect. So what the Haas Effect is, is it's essentially a delay um, that delays from one speaker to the other by literally milliseconds. But what that does is since one is hitting our ears slightly before the other, uh, it's actually deceiving us to thinking that something is super wide and it's got stereo imaging, even though sometimes it doesn't. So I had a buddy send me a track and it was like mono recorded on his iPhone of him playing guitar and singing. And I t literally turned the whole track, the whole track stereo by using a Haas effect. Pretty cool. So uh, if you have headphones on or good speakers, you're going to start to hear that spreading of these hi-hats here. Terrific. Sweet. So now we're going to get into a little bit of groove for producers in general, but especially deep house producers, this is going to make or break your track. So what I mean by that is, is groove is something that is imperfections in your drums. So it's like off grid, it's shuffle, it's, um, you know, notes that aren't as loud as others. So if you think about like a drummer, you know, if a drummer, uh, an actual drummer is like playing on a drum kit he's going to accent notes. So sometimes he's going to hit a dr drum not as, as hard as the other times, and it's going to make it either quiet or, you know, less attack. And sometimes he's going to hit it a little late. And that's really what we're after to like humanize our music. So lucky for us, we could come in here and manually do it. Um, and that's something I do pretty frequently. But what we can do that also works super good is we're going to join this. So we're going to highlight on the command J. So we're consolidating, make this white clip. Same thing with these hats. We're going to command J and consolidate them. And then we can actually come over here into groove pulls. What groove pulls is, is it's these pre-made grooves for us, which is super cool. It's unique to Ableton. 
uh, one of my favorite things ever. So literally it's like these imperfections and these shuffles pre-saved into Ableton. Super dope. So like I have like a couple favorite ones and we can kind of hear what they sound like. So you hear that shuffle, like you hear the movement, the lateness, like the, the velocity. So we can literally drag this and just drop it on our hats and like, let's kind of A and B this so you can see what I'm talking about. This is without and with. Huge, huge, huge difference. So we have everything pretty good in relation to each other. Uh, now, like I talked about, like our kick is already at zero. If our top elements are too loud, that just means we're gonna turn them down instead of forcing the kick to go louder. So we'll like start, a good rule of thumb is, like I was saying, you want your kick and your snare, your clap hitting at zero dBs. Uh, your top end elements, you, kind of, you want those around negative four to start. So we're gonna crank this at negative four. And then one really cool trick for groove that uh, is rad is track delay. So for some reason this doesn't come on um, 11, but maybe it's it's coming on 12 now that I'm looking at it, which is these options here. And this is, you can literally delay the whole track and that's gonna add a lot of swing and feel to it. So if we come over here to like these percussive elements and we're gonna delay them by like 20 milliseconds each. Bring this clack up, clap up a little bit. Another rule of thumb with uh, not just drums, with every, everything in general is high pass something unless you have a reason not to. So like anything that's not your kick or your sub, high pass it, just high pass it. So we'll put this at like 130 is, is like my starter. So like anything that's not your, your kick or sub, like you don't need any of that, one, anything below 130 hertz on it. You want a clean, tight, low end. So what I mean by that is we don't want any other elements in the in the range of where our sub is. We just want our sub there. We're gonna have overlap here with our mids, our vocals, our instruments. We're gonna have overlap here. We don't want any overlap in our low end. So this is in a time where we're gonna get into some drum layering. I see a lot of people just kind of like willy nilly start tossing layers on there with no rhyme or reason. If I'm layering something, it's because there's a characteristic that's missing out of the current drum we're working with. So here we have a kick and a clap and the clap's a little thin. Uh, it's very transient heavy. And so what I mean by that is like this big transient right here, it's got a lot, like a good attack to it, but we kind of want to beef it up and like add a little bit more body and feel to this. So this one's pretty transient heavy as well, but I'm kind of liking the tone it's adding. So, but we already have a transient heavy drum here. So what we're going to do is we're going to compress it. So a uh, brief synopsis of compression is, and this is the corny way it was described to me, is uh, so it's, it's what it basically is, is, is volume automation. So the attack is how fast the volume automation hits, release is, is how, how fast or slow it comes back, and the ratio is how much it's turned down. So the corner comparison I've always received was you're up in your room blaring your music, your Britney Spears album, you know, you're getting in there, and your mom tells you to turn the music down. <clears throat> the attack is how fast you turn it down after she yells at you. The release is how fast you turn it up after 
she tells you to turn it down. And the ratio is how much you turn it down in comparison to how much she, t she told you to turn it down. So if she was like, turn that shit down, two would mean it's reducing it to a two to one ratio. So by half, four would mean a four to one ratio. So that would mean, so that would mean you're turning it down more. And 10 would be turning it down 10 to one, which would be the most. So if we want to do like an aggre aggressive compression, we're going to go to a ratio of 10. And by the way, a, a ratio of a ratio of infinity to one is that's what a limiter is. So like when you get to the higher numbers, like 20, it's basically a limiter because it's not really letting any, it's not letting any noise in compared to where we're trying to get. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn down the threshold. So that's telling it where to turn it down at. And then we're going to reintroduce the gain. So we have this versus pretty squash, right? So this is another example where we're going to kind of revisit groove. So again, we the last thing we want to do is give the listener the same thing over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like a little accent perk here on every other clap. Go down to our samples here. Something like that, subtle. Stuff like this is almost felt more than it's heard, you know? So it's, it's little subtle differences that's really gonna, at the end of the day, make or break our track. And so maybe we'll come in here and we'll do one more clap, little applause clap, and that's gonna be on the other one. And we're gonna turn it down a bunch, like negative 12. Delay it a little bit. We're gonna pan these a little bit. Use some spatial effects on this. So as well with reverb, delay is also you know a spatial effect. So it's kind of pushing something back, and it kind of gives it more bodies because we're gonna have like that delayed signal. So if we pay attention here, we'll hear like a like a nice. Maybe we'll do this on both the kind of background elements. Turn the dry wet down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do here is called a ghost note. So this is another way to implement groove is we're basically gonna use the same sample except we're gonna turn the volume down by about half. A little bit more groove. So what we also can do is hold command and then use the arrows to like barely shift something off grid. Like that. A great rule of thumb in production overall is if you're using like a snare, like the famous one is snares that everybody seems to have problems with, with like, I need to EQ my snare. If the snare doesn't sound right, use a fucking different snare. It's not the right snare or clap for the track or, or whatever you're working on. I don't ever like have any problems EQing or, or processing my snare. I literally toss it in, high pass it like we talked about, and that's it. Like maybe do some group processing with their drums, but like there's no need to do anything crazy. If you have to do that, then it's not the right sample. So when we're hearing something, we're like, this doesn't sound good. We swap it out. Instead of fucking digging in it for an hour. The 
shortening of samples too really helps with the groove. pretty close to moving on to the next part of our track. One thing that we're definitely gonna do is some side chaining. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna layer this kick with a uh, perk. It already kind of has one, but we're gonna kind of bring it out a little bit more because when our kick is hitting, we're gonna side chain everything, which basically means we're gonna make everything duck for like this part here. So we're gonna use side chain compression, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, to make everything duck. And because of that, that means we can now put another layer on top of our kick, like a percussive element that's not going to duck. So we can have like that low end of the kick as well as the top end of the percussive element. So we're going to grab a, a hat, so, something transient heavy like this. Little track delay. It's one of those things again where you probably wouldn't notice it if it wasn't pointed out to you. A little bit of a hat, we'll you know we'll turn it down a little bit. And we'll go ahead and use the Haas effect on this as well. By the way, this is everything I'm using here so far is is free. Um, so Haas effect free uh, on the Ableton website, or you can build one. It's easy to make as well. This is actually a free imager. Ozone 11 imager, it's the best imager on the market. There's a free version, this is the paid version, but they're pretty similar. Um, I'm just using this to show you what's going on with the kick and the, the, the uh, perk we have. So if we look at our kick, see how it's right here in the middle? That means it's mono, which means no imaging. It's, it, it's appearing to us in our headphones and on our speakers as it's directly in the middle. That's where it's the most impactful. That's where it lives. Any kick sample you get, there might be a little stereo imaging on them. For the most part, they're going to be in mono. And now with this, we have the little. Dope. So, I mean, that's good for now. We'll probably revisit this a little bit, but we're going to call that good. So now what we're going to do is we have our top elements and we have our kick and our snare. And now what I like to do personally is I shift arrow command G group these. And now this is our drums with a Z. And now we're going to introduce another glue compressor. This one's kind of just to catch the peaks. And what I mean by that is we have these, you know, peaks of, of what's happening is things are summing. And what I mean by that is we have these, like all these right here are all summing. So they're adding up and they're creating something louder than, than we want. You know, we don't want it this loud, but we want all the tonality of everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a glue compressor and it's just going to turn those peaks down. So it's going to do a little bit of volume automation right here on, on everything, just so it's not like making it louder than we want. And that's what this arrow is here. Beautiful, beautiful. So what I like to do is we really want to accentuate this kick because this kick is like driving our whole track. So like that four on the floor beat is what's making everybody dance. It's what's keeping everyone on beat. It's that the thumping in the club. So like we want to make sure that we're accentuating this kick as much as we can. And the way we're going to do that is with side chaining. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our top end elements. And we're going to put a compressor on it. Ableton stock compressor and we're going to hit this little arrow right here and it's going to give us an option that says side chain and now it's going to ask where do we want to bring the audio in from when we're telling these this group to duck what's telling it to duck what signal is is saying duck and typically what we would do is we would use our kick but what we're going to do in this situation is we're going to use our hat that's paired with our kick because it's sitting on top of our kick and it's more transient heavy. So we don't necessarily want everything to duck all here, like all in this huge transient of our kick. We just want a little duck right here. So we're gonna set it to the input from our hat that is paired with our kick, which is gonna be five hat, big deal. 
and we want a quick attack because we want the ducking to happen as soon as the transient comes in. Pretty quick release, you know, we could, we could put it on auto if we want, but I'll put it in around like 17. Aggressive ratio. So we're gonna revisit this when we get into the elements, but definitely that, now this, it's, it's subtle, but it's already accentuating our kick. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and keep keep it pushing from our drums here. Um, the next element we're gonna introduce is going to be, uh, let's do some bass, you know, like a driving bass line. So what we're gonna do for a sub is, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can go and manually create a, a sub line. When we're creating our sub bass, there's a couple different ways we can go about that. We can have like a individual sub that is literally just its own deal. We could have a, our sub bass be a part of some of our higher elements, so it can be like, part of our mids, or we can just literally just pull it out of our kick. And sometimes with this four on the floor kind of production, the best way to do it is literally just pull it out of the kick. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we have a kick here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a drum bus. So this is kind of like a, a drum utility, but it's cool, especially for subs, because um, it'll give us the sub bass, literally just bring it out of our kick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first set it to our key. So as we talked about, uh, you know, we want between D, E, and F. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to like D. And then we're just gonna slowly increase the boom. F's resonating a little better, so we're gonna go with F. Just run it into a limiter. We're gonna make sure we're in mono. So now that we have like our fundamental groove down, now we're gonna start introducing some elements. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and hop on Splice and grab a vocal sample. So for those of you who are unaware, Splice is a super dope website and subscription for samples. The cool part about it is, you know, you don't have to go and buy a whole sample pack. You can literally just come in here and search for a particular sample. And it, you know, you can purchase a certain amount of credits per month. They have super cheap plans. There are, you know, free vocals out there. This is probably the only thing that's technically going to cost money. But if you want to get technical, you can come in here and like these samples are pennies on the dollar. Like the one credit is like five cents or something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to search Deep House Vocal. And it'll kind of give us uh, parameters. So we're going to, we want Deep House as a tag. We want um, vocals. And we want dry, the reason we want dry is because we want to process these ourselves. So we don't want someone to give us a sample with reverb on it. We don't want someone to give us a, a, you know, a chopped up or a delayed sample because us as producers, that's what we're going to do. And having a dry sample is going to give us the flexibility of uh, processing it ourselves to best fit our song. So we're going to go with dry. And we're going to kind of uh, just cruise through and see what we see here. And if it's out of key, we can transpose it, meaning we can move it up or down. So don't you know, focus too much on that. I think I need a break, don't care how long it takes You know I hate the way you lie to me You make me feel so- That's kind of fire, and it's- so the two cool things about the sample is one, it's already in our BPM which doesn't matter because we could warp it, we could stretch it if we wanted. Um, and two, it's uh, in G minor and we're in F, so that's only two notes away. The reason both of those things are good is because if say this was in like 70 BPM or something like that, stretching it that much is gonna create artifacts and it's gonna degrade the sample. So it's right on the BPM so you don't have to warp it at all and we only have to transpose it two keys. So this is a perfect sample for this track. I'm gonna go ahead and grab it, one credit, I'm gonna download it. And all we have to do is drag it into here. Another cool thing about Splice is once you download stuff from the website, it automatically goes in its own folder over here, wherever it's at, here it is, Splice. So it's it's really cool, I love Splice. So we have our sample and let's kind of see how it sits on top of our groove here. I think I need a break, don't care how long it takes, you know I hate the way you lie to me. So what 
I just did there is over here on pitch, I just moved it down um, two semitones. So complex is the mode you're gonna wanna be in for pitching vocals, this or complex pro. The difference between complex and complex pro is, uh, not to get too technical, but complex pro allows you to match up the formant. So the, what the formant is in a sample is it's the dominant frequency. So the formant, like the formant is what tells something what pitch it is. So when you're transposing and playing with the formant, you can really like lock it into the pitch or the key you're looking at. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you lie to me. You make me feel so dark. You really broke my heart. You open up my scars. I think I need a. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know. So interesting, this sample said it was in, in uh, G, but it's resonating super hard on C, uh, which that's kind of interesting. If you're not sure what note a sample is, then using a spectrum is a great way to determine that. Basically, you're looking for the lowest, loudest frequency. So sometimes like even drums are tonal, sometimes they're not. But if, you, if you're ever like wondering if a sample is, is working or it's the right note or in, in key with your track, bring up a spectrum. Uh and look for the lowest, loudest frequency. So in this uh, particular part of the track, when you're saying I, like that I is an A. I think I and this is gonna be, a, the think is gonna be a C. And what I'm looking at is this down here. So this little blue legend is telling us what note it's in. So this is very much so a D. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so for this particular sample, I think we're gonna go ahead and just roll with a G, which is fine. It doesn't have to be D through F. The reason why is because the integrity of the sample in its original pitch I think I need a is beautiful. And we don't really want to tamper with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our um, kick and we're going to go ahead and change this from an F to a G. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you lie to me. You make me feel so dark. You really broke my heart. You open So this is a pretty cool trick in Ableton that sometimes it works great, sometimes it does not work at all. But you can actually convert harmonies and audio clips to MIDI. So sometimes it's absolutely trash, sometimes it, it works decent. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click this audio cl clip, the vocal, and we're going to convert melody to new MIDI track. So it actually did a pretty good job of replicating the, the notes. They're just kind of like all over the place. But that's okay because all we need is the notes. So this is something that's very important to remember about production in general, is you only need one good idea for each track. And what I mean by that is uh, we can take this like little um, melody that she's singing, the notes of the melody, um, any of that, and we can literally repurpose it for our entire track. So we hear here like we have a... We see we have, what is this, a E and a D. So what we're gonna do with that information is, we see here we have a... This is for sure wrong. There we go, that's better. So, Let's change this to G because this is in G now. So now we kind of see what notes she's singing in and we're going to use these notes to, to kind of create some other elements here. By the way, this this operator that gave us analog whatever, this is just a placeholder for a better instrument we're gonna have. So don't worry about the sound, we're just trying to get like a melody down. So we're basically just trying to find something that works out of these notes here. 
That's dope. So we basically grabbed three of the notes we had from our harmony loop here. And like, this is a good start. This little this pluck series right here. Now we're just gonna take this, delete everything else. And what we can actually do is we can come over here and command A to select all the MIDI clips. And we're gonna press um, legato. And basically what that means is that it's extending all the notes to the next note. So they're all, they're full length to the next note. So that's pretty dope. So now let's find like an instrument or something that works here. So we're gonna go over to our instruments and uh, let's grab like, let's see here. Tension is kind of like strings. And you know, if these sounds are a little corny at first because they're Ableton stock sounds, don't worry about it. We're gonna process them so they sound dope. I think I need a, I th so like this weird little like tonal drum, um, this would be like a dope layer and that's something we're going to keep an eye out for is like, again, you know, talking, going back to like repurposing something in a million different ways. This is something that we can like slightly bring in at some point in the track and bring out. So what I'm going to do is command D and duplicate this track and we're going to mute this or we can leave it on while we kind of experiment with, with another sound we want. You make me feel so select you know any of the elements that we're making and we're gonna call them mids what I like to do so any instrument that are living in the middle so this like robot voice deal is pretty cool it's kind of like ethereal and mystical and all that um, we want to bring it further up front. So what we're going to do is we're going to use saturation, which is a great tool for kind of like pushing something forward. So we could increase the volume, which we will do also. But notice it has all that like low ended mud that we don't want. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a saturator. Little medium curve, soft clip on. So see how we're getting these super gnarly peaks right here and then there's nothing here and there's nothing here. The way to fix that is going to be multi-band compression. So circling back to, you know, what we talked about compression of being the volume automation, multi-band compression is going to treat only the select areas we're, we're working on. So what I'm going to do is grab a multi-band compressor, multi-band dynamics. Now we see we have this huge spike here in the middle. So if we drag this up or down, if we drag this, it's going to, decrease the ratio so it's going to be a more aggressive compression here and now we can actually come up here and upward compress so we're pushing the highs up now look at our signal sounding pretty blown out because we just compressed the living hell out of it but I'm kind of digging like that that lo-fi kind of sound and you know when you come to a point like this where you have a sound like that the best thing to do is like roll with it like what we're going to do now is put like a vinyl uh, distortion on and this is going to give the illusion that it's almost like a sample from a record like an old record you know <laughs>
good foundation to work off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start playing around with this vocal a little bit. Um, and like we talked about, we're going to do a little bit of processing on it. So first things first, some reverb. So I like the convolution ones because what convolution reverb actually is, is it emulates real spaces. So I feel like it resonates with our brains better because these are actual spaces. So like this is a cathedral. So this has like the, the frequency response of a cathedral. So obviously we wouldn't want, you know, this directly on our, our vocals because what it's doing is it's now pushing it way to the back of our soundstage. So the way to combat this is something called parallel uh, processing, in this case, parallel reverb. And what that means is we're actually going to take the signal, split it in two. We're going to have one signal with reverb on it and one completely dry signal. So I'm going to, sh oops, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So we're going to click our plugin, uh, our reverb, and we're going to command G. So we're going to group it. And now we're going to click open these little uh, this, these tabs here with these lines on them. And now we're going to create a chain. So what's happening is the audio signal is coming in here and now it's splitting. So it's coming in here and giving us a reverb uh, signal. And it's also giving us, I'm going to rename this dry, a dry signal and reverb. And now we can turn this reverb down because we don't want it blaring at us. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. Ooh. So we went from this to this. I think I need a break. That's it right there. Like, psh, let's go. I think I need a break. And the cool part about this is, namely in Ableton, because you can't parallel process in any other DAW like this, is we can do as many of these as we want. So we can do another chain here. And we can actually come up and do a delay. So now we can have a delay channel. So we're going to toss this on here. It renames for us. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you lie to me. Like that's flames, bro. Are you kidding me? We're going to go to negative, negative 16. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you lie to me. So now our vocal is like really coming to life here. So this is going back to like our sound stage. And the way I like to explain what's happening on our sound stage with parallel processing is going back to like the parking garage comparison. You're standing on one side of the parking garage. I'm standing on the other. I clap and you hear you. This is what you hear right here. You hear this. You just hear that I'm really far away from you. You don't hear the, the signal right in front of you. But let's say that now I'm right in front of you and we're in the parking garage together and I'm, I clap. Not only do you hear the, the reverb in the back of the room, you're also hearing the uh, dry clap that's right in front of you. So in doing this, it's giving, putting something in a space and also giving it size, which is super cool. So now, you know, if you pay attention, this singer sounds like she's singing in front of us and it's coming in behind us. So it's just making it sound super big and, and you know, like the focus of our track, which, which our vocal should be. I think I need a break, don't care how long it takes. But with our dry signal, we want to make sure that that's, you know, our, our Michael Jackson, our, our front and center as much as we can. So we're going to go ahead and toss some um, saturation just on the, on the dry signal, just a little bit. So we're going to do like soft sign, maybe 3 dB. I think I need a break, don't care how long it takes, you know, I think I need a it's really important when doing stuff like this that you make sure that you're not boosting your signal when you're processing. Typically, there's there's exceptions to every rule, but like if if it's coming into our saturator, I think we want it colored, we want the saturation, but we don't really want it louder than it came in at. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you lie to me. Cuz what's going to happen is if you keep doing this, it's actually introducing, it's degrading your sound and it's introducing noise. I think I... Because you're like cranking up the gain and cranking it down and back up. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you lie to me. So A and B. I think I need a break. I think I need a break. Another super cool OG trick that we're going to do now is the reverse reverb throw. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy like the first transient. So the first little part of this, um, uh, like vocal here, the, the I. Uh, uh, uh. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a reverb. Uh, uh, uh. 
something like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on the head of our track. We're going to right click it and we're going to freeze the track. Then we're going to right click it and we're going to flatten the track. So we're basically printing this to audio. And now what we're going to do is we have this big, long, like reverb tail. We're going to come in here and we're going to lead this up. into our vocals. So we're going to lead this reverb swell right into the rest of them. And it gives this really cool like effect of like a, a reverb swell coming into the vocals. So if we listen to just like these here. You open up my scars. I think I need a break. Love it. Love it. You open up my scars. So we got a pretty good foundation at this point. You know, we have our nice little plucks, we have our vocals, we have our drums. Now we're gonna kind of get into like the adding and subtracting and the kind of like building around the track. So I think we're probably gonna want like one more cool mids element. So we're gonna we're gonna roll with this pluck again and we're going to create a new MIDI track and we're going to copy and paste these. <laughs> So we can literally just come in here and press plus times two or divided by two. It'll speed it up or slow it down. So we can have like a pluck or like a slower melody. So that's cool, but we're gonna reduce the reverb. So we're not going to get like deep into theory here, but what we can do here is an inversion to like kind of switch up the, the groove of this. What I mean by that is we can keep these same notes, but we can invert them. So put them on different octaves and it's going to create a different feel for the second part of this plux. So like we'll shift this up. Maybe we'll shift this down. And then this. Something like that's kind of cool. So we'll have like we'll clean it up a little bit. And with a lot of these instruments, they put these mappings here for a reason. These are what sound good with, with these instruments. So we're going to get into automation here shortly, but I think we should keep this plug. It's cool. And, um, you know, let's kind of just roll with that for now. I don't want to get too stuck on the small details. Really broke my heart. You open up my scars. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start playing around and repurposing these vocals a little bit. Um, let's see if we can get a clean uh, octave blow on these with, with stock Ableton plugins. I think I need a break. So we're in um, Complex Pro. That's great. We're going to shift down to pitch it down. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you. Pretty good. I think I need a break. Grab this little ah right here and start chopping this up a, a little bit and playing with it. So something cool to consider is if everything's cut from the same cloth, so we're either using the same notes or we're using the same sample, it's gonna help the whole track sound more cohesive. 
So here we have like this vocal chop and we can really like process this and make it crazy. Well, and it's gonna sound good no matter what because we know it's in the same key because it's the same sample and it's literally the same sample. So let's do like, let's get creative. Let's do like a spectral resonator. And this is a cool one too, um, around the head. So it's a, um, it's a uh, auto pan feature, which moves. If you have you know headphones on or speakers, it's gonna move the sound almost like it's around your head. It's pretty cool. And then some reverb. This is way in the back, so we don't we don't need it to be dry. Maybe we'll just pan this. chop there i love grabbing little stuff like this Do like a little offset i think i i think i need i think What can we do to make this crazy? Let's do like um Corpus is pretty cool. It gives things like tones of, of wood and beams and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Cool, so we got a couple different sections to work with now. This is a dope starting spot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding some movement into here. We can add group these and just call these Vox, vocals, whatever. So we have our drums, our Vox. Uh, I would label this in effects. So we'll, we'll um, call this a sweep for now. And then plucks, and this is gonna go in our mids group and there's nothing on here. It's very important to keep yourself organized when you're working because you for sure will end up with a mess and like this is just so clean and easy to work with. So we're gonna start doing a little arranging and effects to kind of like bring this whole thing together here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some stuff so we can kind of slowly start bringing it in. So in this, in, in Deep House, huge, huge thing, auto filters. 
So auto filters uh, gives the, you know, like we talked about the perceived uh, notion that something is far away or that it's like on the other side of a wall or it's underwater or however you want to think about it. So starting this down here and edging it up is, is, is going to work wonders for our track here. So we're going to start here and we're going to slowly bring this vocal in. right here that'll be pretty cool like a, a nice fast pluck um to kind of like build the tension so we'll I think I need something like that so we'll just move this to the side for now This, this instrument actually has its own filter on it. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. So one of the key things with production in general, especially Deep House, but like keeping stuff moving. So like the, the thing that's going to kill your mix the quickest is stagnant. So like this playing over and over again. The quickest way to make something not cool is to do it too much. So what we want to do is not overdoing it, but we, we want to keep stuff constantly moving. So little stuff like this, we're going to, you know, hop in these parameters and... In fact, they actually have a plugin called Shaper, which what we can do is we can literally just map this and it can control... Control one of these parameters automatically. Again, you know, subtly, it doesn't have to be gnarly. Now we're getting some nice movement on here, you know, keeping it interesting, moving to the side, to the back. A little jitter, a little like high elements in the back. We'll do that every quarter note. does is pushes stuff away so what it's what when you're doing a build what you're doing is you're taking elements away to like reintroduce them in full effect so we're, we want everything to like go far away and get washed out and, and cut the lows and cut the highs and then when that it hits you know the 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 sub hits everybody goes crazy because it's not that the sub is that loud it's that we took everything else away before the sub so everybody's perceiving that sub as being super loud so, you know, in situations like this where we're kind of coming out of our intro into our um, build and then our, our drop, as you, if you would, this is going to be where it's important to, like, add some of the, those characteristics. Lie me. You make me feel so dark. You really broke my heart. You open up my scars. I think I need... Dope. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this. Um, so this is going to hit right here. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way. Now we're going to move. I think I need a break. Bring this pluck up a little bit. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you lie to me. You make me feel so dark. You really broke my heart. You open up my scars. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you. Again, an auto 
filter, so we'll slowly introduce this new element. Start off low, bring it up. I think I need a Again, you know, melding in and out with those with those different elements. I think I need a break. Don't care how long it takes. You know I hate the way you flatter me. You make me feel so dark. You really broke my heart. You open up my scars. You flatter me. You make me feel so dark. Again, keeping stuff moving. Let's do um go back to our, our pack here. And you know, we would be doing more switch ups with the percussive elements and everything. We'll kind of get into that later. creating groove you know shuffles little off grid little lengthening of the clip so we got you know a nice little so we want to make this loud but it's transient and heavy so what we're going to do is we're going to compress it and now as you'll see the waveform is going to start taking up more space on our timeline the more we compress it. <coughs> and now let's run it through an app. So there's, you know, the app, the um, saturation, the distortion, they're all different flavors of essentially the same thing. They're just, we're, we're boosting harmonics and we're giving stuff body. So if you're ever in question of like, do I use amp, overdrive, distortion, they're different flavors. Interesting. That's crazy. It's like a snare now. So we're going to do a boost. So probably for this segment, we'll shut off the reverb. So we'll automate the reverb and dim this because we want this kind of kind of be like come in the front right here. Too 
one for sure. So that's a cool little switch up section here. And you know, all we really did was we chopped up the vocal and grooved it. So I, I can't stress enough. Like if you have a dope groove, you have a dope track. What I mean by that is little chops. We processed them a little bit. You know, we put them on the quarter notes down here. We did a little warping. And then, I mean, we can even come in here and every other one, we can like chop it a little bit. cut right there I don't know about these plucks here I think a pluck is cool, but I think that one's a little too. Um... So what we're gonna do here is uh, into the section, we're gonna do a little like delay throw. So we're gonna automate this chain here. So we're gonna right click, show automation, and we're gonna like automate a little delay throw here. So we give it like a little space and a little size right here. Open the skies. Great, so now we're gonna start gluing this whole thing together with some effects. So we have our Vox, our Mids, and this is going to be our effects group. We can go ahead and group these and you can either call this Mids 2 or Body, whatever you want. And now we're going to start adding some sweeps. So like white noise and sweeps is really going to help ease the transitions and like kind of like move the track along. So we don't have any sweeps, but what we do have is a ride and that is just as good. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, warp, and we're going to stretch it. We're going to find a mode. That's good enough. So a super stretched out ride will work. So we're gonna turn this way down because we want our effects the furthest in the back. pretty much at the end of every four bars to like kind of ease the transition and like tell the listeners the transition's coming. Cool, so we got some nice sweeps in there and now the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some like snare rolls into the important parts. So along with effects, I like to do a little bit of ear candy. So like little stuff that's almost unnoticeable in the background. So like, let's go back to our sample folder here. And um, let's see here. Super little stuff. Like we'll, we'll um, make like a, you know, we'll do like some sound design, like spectral blur. That's beautiful, look at that. Just a spectral blur on a perk. 
gives us this big like ambient kind of sound. And now we can just toss some other samples on here. Just little ear candies, you know, here or there. You know, a good start. A couple little noises over here. We're going to call this effects. And we can toss this once again in our final mids group. And then, last but not least, let's do like some drum risers here. Like, let's build some tension. Um, these are also some free Max for Life plugins. Uh, <clears throat> instruments. One's called Clap. What is it? Yeah, so these are free Max for Live and they're like drum synthesizers. It's so like snare, and it's a MIDI instrument, but the cool part about this and the clap one, uh, which is right here, is it like, it's randomizes it, which is super cool, so it makes it sound sloppier, like a you know, room full of people are clapping. So what we're gonna do is we're going to We're gonna hit it every quarter bar. And we're gonna duplicate this and do the same with a snare. This isn't gonna live here, we're just kind of building it right here. So we have we're gonna call this um, build snare. Something like this, you know, some nice and buildy. Again, you know our golden rule. We're gonna we're gonna high pass it at a filter or at a um, compressor because they're summing right here. Remember, these are two peaks summing. Catch the peaks a little bit. And with MIDI, we can actually accent this by adjusting the velocity down here. So like. Maybe every other one, you know, we'll duck it a little bit, turn the velocity down a little bit. And we'll go ahead and print this to audio. So the way you can, we can freeze and flatten this, but we might want to come back and adjust this. So we can actually, what we can do is we can click external in and we can click resampling. And then what we can do is hit record here and when this is playing, it's gonna record onto this track. So once we hit record. Cool, so now we have a little bit of like a snare clap thing to work with and we have the instructions if we need to come back. So we can crank this up a little bit. And another cool warp mode is called beats mode and it warps based on the transient. So you can kind of hear what I'm, I'm talking about here. If we play this, this will shorten, like lengthen or shorten the, the sample. That's good. So now what we're gonna do is we have like the obviously the increasing snare deal. Um, 
and we're gonna use this rack. It's called One Knob Build. It's one of my absolute favorites. It's like three bucks. You can do this without this this um this uh rack, but it just takes all the guesswork out. It makes it super easy. And what it does is it does all the things we talk about, about, you know, we talked about earlier with stereo imaging where we cut, we cut the highs, we add reverb, we add, um, uh, uh, we turn it down, we, we thin it out. It does all that with one knob. So three bucks, totally worth the investment. So we'll do like, let's try like wash out. Or like a basic sweep is probably fire. Again, subtle, but works magic. So we'll do that on here on our snares. And we're going to use a shifter like we talked about to slowly pitch it up. So we'll go into pitch and on fine. So fine, this, if we crank it all the way to the right, that's one semitone. So that's, that's perfect for here. Cool. So this is a super dope foundation for a deep house song. What we're going to do now is... Um, we're going to kind of do some final touches. So let's say we were happy with the arrangement. We, you know, we went all the way. This is what we would do next to pretty much bring this to completion. So like I was talking about, we want to mix things in groups. So that way it's like one unit and we can treat it as such. So we have our giant mids group here. I think I need a bit. First thing we want to do always in a group typically is a glue compression catching those peaks and just gluing everything together so the dynamics are more common, it's more cohesive. I think I need a break, don't care how long it takes, you know I hate the way you lie. Always that high pass, 130. I think I need a break, don't care how long it takes, you know I hate the way you lie to me. You make me feel so dark, you and you know, we're going back to our, our soundstage uh, comparison, everything has its place. So like in this situation here where, you know, we have vocals playing and these instruments, we have to think, we don't want them sitting on top of each other. So where are they sitting at? So like here, I think I need a break. Don't care how long. our vocals, you know, these are Michael Jackson. They're up front at the, at the front of the stage. Um, I think I need a and this isn't really interrupting it at all. That's the way you want to look at it is, is this interrupting? Is this fighting for space this really isn't because it's it's far enough back you know it's ambient um they're not fighting so i'm not really going to worry about it i could go in and pan this and widen it but it sounds fine the way it is i think i need a break don't care how long it takes you i think i need a break don't care because you know i hate the way you lie to me you make me feel so dark Same thing with the robot voice. It's not really fighting. I'm not going to worry about it too much. And these aren't, you know, these are all over. They're not on top of each other, so we don't really have to write about that. So honestly, you know, we could really nitpick and get in there, but I'm going to go ahead and say these are good enough. Um, so basically what we look for in this group is they gave, we gave them that common dynamic and they're all the same volume level. That and they're, they're not on top of each other. So the combination of they're all dynamically the same and they all have their space. Now we can treat this as one unit and we can mix it in with our drums. So typically at the end of the track, I usually turn the drums up a little bit or turn everything else down so the drums are really banging. So let's turn this down like negative 2 dB just a little bit and kind of see where it sounds like. And the final touch, which is going to make a humongous difference, is the sidechain compression on the mids group. So remember earlier we made this sidechain compressor for our tops. We can literally just command C copy this and now we can bring this over to the mids and put it on here. The only problem with this is we love that ducking, we love that pumping. We don't necessarily want it to cut the vocals. So the way we can combat that is we can 
instead of putting on the vocals, putting on the remainder of the mids. So we're gonna copy this, delete that. Um, I think I need a break, don't care how long it takes. That ducking really can really make or break the track. That like pumping, that kicks hitting, everything's boom, boom, ducking, ducking. Again, you don't want to overdo it, just the perfect amount. So it's, this is actually the perk if you remember. So it's not even the kick, it's the perk. And we're going to go ahead and crank this kick up just a little bit. Because remember, this is the heart of our track. So um, let's turn this up like 2 dB and see what that sounds like. sweep right here. <laughs> Dope. So from, you know, from here we would just kind of arrange this out, but um, in regards to kind of like a final mix, now that we have all these in relation to each other, we're basically going to come down here to our, our master and we're going to make sure everything is sitting correctly. So what I mean by that is... We're gonna look at our EQ8, and the EQ8 is always gonna look the same no matter what type of music it is. We're gonna have our peak right here, which is our sub bass. It's gonna slant down and it's gonna kind of curve off right here. And this down here, you typically want a little dip in because your sub bass sits at like about 40k and up everything down here is really just like noise you don't want so we have our, our kick and our, our bass driving the track right here everything's kind of slanting down so that looks pretty good um, a little bit of multi-band uh, dynamics And what this is doing is just even it, evening everything out. So if there's some mids that are out of control, if there's some lows that are out of control, just even everything out. You know, you think of, of music and production a lot like art. You want to give everything that common uh, factor. So what I would do is grab a saturator and like little teeny bit of saturation on the master just so everything sounds similar. We could even do this in parallel, which is what I typically do. So um, we'll put this down here on a return track. And we're going to boost the saturation. And we can do it aggressive when it's on a return track. And then what we're going to do is we're going to group everything so I like to call this all and now we're going to push this into the saturation and we want it to be aggressive because it's it's parallel so two spots that you may or may not need to kind of work on a little bit is here which is where the harshness lives so this is going to be like so if you click this headphone logo right here if anything you're selected, it'll play that. So we're looking for like that ear piercing sound up here. I'm not really hearing any. The next section is going to be the mud, which is going to sit at about right about 250. And it's going to be that kind of muddy sound we don't want. This also draws a little separation from the sub and the kick and the rest of the track. So I usually always do hit a little bell on the 250 hertz range. 
And a little bit of boost at the very top can add a little bit of excitement, which is nice too. Another glue compressor just again to catch those peaks and just reduce them a little bit and then we're just going to run everything into a limiter just make sure we're not getting any clipping here So the last thing we're going to do is going back to what we talked about, like introducing the sections and taking away so they're impactful. Uh, this is a pretty cool little OG trick here, and this would be to slightly reduce the gain before the drop. So like not much at all. We're talking like we'll do like a. You can add a value negative 2 dB drop and then it hits back at zero. So same thing with like here. Anywhere there's like a little bit of a, um, a build. This is also in that one knob build. Um, we'll use that again. So we'll use this on literally all our whole all group to kind of like. The last thing I'm going to touch on is we're going to use this plugin one knob build again to ease the transitions and do all that takeaway stuff we talked about. So the gain reduction, you know, the washout, the the um, filter, all that, so we can give it back and make it impactful. <laughs> So, you know, at this point, everything's good in relation to each other. It's sounding pretty good. Uh, if I was not working on strictly Ableton devices at this point, I would come in here and, and use some, you know, some ozone to master it, some Gullfoss, some Soothe, uh, make it sound expensive. But, you know, I think this is good. I would not hesitate to to play this out for the reason of knowing that everything's sitting where it should sit on the EQ. We have the multiband dynamic, so everything's in control. It's compressed and it's limited. So once all these things are in check on our master, it can really only sound so bad on you know a different system that's not my headphones. I really hope this was helpful to someone. If you guys have any questions or anything, just drop them in the chat, I'm, I'm happy to help. I also teach Ableton, so if you're looking to expedite your curve of learning, don't hesitate to DM me. Um, I've worked with you know, three or four mentors over the years, and it's significantly faster than searching stuff on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching so much. I will link everything I've used in the description, and I'll also go ahead and just link this project because I know sometimes it's helpful to just look at projects and kind of see what's going on. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. We find ourselves standing before an unopened gift, a wrapped enigma waiting to reveal its secrets. Underneath the twinkling Christmas tree lights, a present sits, unassuming yet intriguing. The sound of crinkling paper fills the air as we delve deeper, exposing a core of the hidden treasure. With a sense of reverence, we lift the lid of the box, revealing the marvel within. A gasp escapes, a whisper on the stillness. It's Behemoth's first sample book. It's more than just a game. It's an invitation to a world of sonic exploration. The box is filled to the brim with a myriad of sounds, each one a testament to Behemoth's creative prowess. One can almost hear the soft whispers of melodies and the rhythmic pulses of beats waiting to be discovered.